People that can do this from now moving forward are going to be the new top earners in this industry. Ready? I would go on Google and I would search for local business networking events. I would attend every single business networking event that I could. If you do this, it'll differentiate you. And most people aren't willing to do it right now. If you are, it'll change your life. Welcome to MLM Nation, a podcast of leaders, by leaders, for leaders, hosted by Simon Chan. He's built a team of over 200,000 and is now a full-time MLM coach and trainer. So if you're ready to level up your business, join us now. Let's do this. MLM Nation, this is Simon Chan. I'm fired up to bring our special guest today. We have Don Martin. Hey, Don, are you ready to make it happen? I'm ready, Simon. I'm ready. Hey, I'm super excited for this uh, today's show, Don. We just talked about kids and sports. Uh, but for those who don't know Don, this is his third time on ML Nation. He first appeared in 2016 on episode 217, where he shared the secrets to being the best networker in any room. And also on episode 619 in 2020, when he talked about how to increase your self-belief. Don played college baseball was a pro player for a short time and ran a construction company before he got started in network marketing over 25 years ago. Today, he's a full-time leader and an entrepreneur who's earned over $5 million in lifetime commissions. He also runs two other businesses along with his coaching and mentoring programs. Don is happily married to his wife, Lisa, and three kids and lives out in Pennsylvania. And ML Nation, the reason I have Don again, it's not because it's a leap year every four years, but it just turned out that way. By the way, did you know it's always Almost the four years to the date. Every time we've had you on the show, it's June, July. Uh, but recently, Don celebrated his 25th anniversary with the same company. He's never been with any other company. I think that is something that's really, really cool. He's earning good residuals, allowed him to do other things. So I wanted to have him on. So anyway, Don, welcome to ML Nation. Take us to back to how did you go from a college baseball player to doing construction to network marketing? Yeah, well, Simon, again, thanks for having me on. I appreciate the awesome introduction and I appreciate you having me on again because I love to share, you know, my story, hoping that it makes an impact on other people, hoping that can help people move forward with their careers. Uh, really, that's what it's all about for me at this point, at least in my career. And, uh, and it's an honor to be here with everybody. So, uh, so yeah, little, little history of me. Again, I was introduced when I was 23 years old. It was actually two months before my 24th birthday is when I actually started. But interestingly enough, the approach began four months before that. You know, I was being approached by actually a very successful person. He was my accountant who, who had become my accountant. And uh, he was extremely successful. And interestingly enough, I had a very bad stigma about the network marketing and multi-level marketing industry because my father had tried it multiple times. And it was very difficult for me to even be open to look at anything because I had a lot of preconceived notions. As a lot of people know, in fact, we know we we come across it all the time. If we're as we're professionals in this industry, right? We come across people that have these preconceived notions. I had them because my dad did not have a good experience in network marketing, um, and it wasn't for lack of working. It was it was. T t I really believe at this point it was more the opportunity than anything. It was it wasn't really set up for the average person. It wasn't set up for people that wanted to you know, to, to be successful, but I had those stigma. So I wasn't interested. And there's only one reason why I looked. And I think this is a very important takeaway for people too. I only looked for one major reason. My accountant, I had a construction company at the time. So I went to college and majored in baseball, just to give a little you know, preamble here. I majored in baseball. I didn't go to school for anything but baseball. I had zero interest in the schooling side of it. I only went to class so I can pass so I can play baseball right? So th that's what I went to school for. I was expecting to play professional baseball. Uh, my junior year, I was the fourth ranked pitcher in all division one baseball in the nation for NCAA. So I was expecting to play pro. I decided instead of going, leaving school out of my junior year and playing pro, I decided to go back for one more year because I was the only junior in the top five pitchers in the nation. They were all their seniors. So that meant if I had a same productive year, I could be the number one product, you know, the number one pitcher in the nation. And, and really it makes a big difference in baseball versus any other sport because there's a lot more levels of go. But when you're like that number one pitcher in the country versus number four, number five, 
it, it's it's completely different scenario in terms of compensation, you know, in terms of opportunities, it's very, very different. But interestingly enough, um, I went back to school and I had I suffered a, a minor injury, not really minor, but an injury enough to where it affected my my ability to be at the level that I was. And I went from being like the fourth ranked pitcher in the nation, right, in my junior year to pl- playing well in my senior year, but it affected me enough to where I did play a little pro ball more because some people were willing to take a chance on me to see if it would come back. But the injury was such that a surgery would have made it worse, not better. And I could still play through it, but it really limited my effectiveness. So, um, you know, long story short, I tried a little bit of pro ball, but I just wasn't there. And I had, you know, it was an early exit from what I wanted to do for my life. So it was a disappointing thing, but I had the tenacity. So the point is I started a construction company because I didn't have a backup plan. I had no backup plan. So I started the construction company to get myself in the position to do well financially. And I used my sports and athletic competitive nature to, to, to pursue my entrepreneurial career, which started in construction. But I found my accountant to bring this story back full circle. I found my accountant through a friend of mine and my accountant had three things going on in his life. He had his accounting firm and he was making great money with that. He was an investor in real estate. He owned like 65 pieces of property, but he also had another business I knew nothing about. It ended up being a network marketing business. And I just assumed what he was doing was something like my dad was doing. And I had zero interest. The only reason why I ended up looking, because for four months, he was pursuing me about looking at his his network marketing deal. I had zero interest because of my dad's experience. However, I looked for one reason. He was willing to support me in my construction company. He was willing to give me referrals. And I knew if I didn't reciprocate and at least be honorable enough to learn what he was doing and to be willing to give him referrals, even though I didn't think I was interested at all myself, He could easily give my referrals to somebody else. I had to keep that reciprocal relationship solid. Does that make sense? Yep. And that's what I did. So I only looked on a Sunday night at 730 in my in my friend's grandmother's living room because I wanted to keep that relationship solid with my accountant so he would keep the referrals coming to me. And I showed that I I was willing to be reciprocal to him. Uh, But when I saw it, it was very, very different than anything I assumed it was going to be. It was polar opposite from what my preconceived notions were. Um, it was very different from anything I'd ever seen before. And I decided to get started because it just made too much sense for me. And not only did I think I could do it, but I knew other people could. I think that was the thing that really resonated with me is if I share this with other people, they can win too. And they won't be a sidewalk casualty like my dad was in the industry at the time. Uh, interestingly enough, I did bring my dad into the business. He was one of the first people I brought in. And my dad, um, I, I, he's got to be right about at that million dollar mark now. You know, so he had zero success. I think it was three different companies he tried when I was a kid. Um, But because he, right thing, right time, right opportunity, you know, he would wanted to do it with me. You know, he was able to become really successful and and uh, and and really create another full time income stream in his household. And he still does it part time. He still does it part time. He loves what he does for a career, but he still does a uh, part time. But it's a full time income for him. So um, that's what brought me to this. And, and it's, been a, it's been an absolute blast, the whole, the whole process along the way. So some struggles, of course, but nonetheless, it's been, it's been positive. You said something really interesting. You said you felt um, you could do it. And that's one of the reasons why a lot of people are enjoying. They, the business the opportunity could be great, but they don't feel they can do it. Why did you feel you could do it? Well, for me, there was there were some things that was in in the in the the model that I was looking at. There was th- there were some things that the founder and creator of it simplified, made it simpler, made it more realistic for average people to succeed, and that really really uh, resonated with me. Because I, I'll be honest with you, I had an ego at that point. I was really successful in construction after being really successful in baseball, and then and you know a, a career cut short because of an injury. Um, and then, but I was willing to work hard. That's the one thing I always, I was willing to be tenacious and work hard and outwork everybody. Like that's what was one of the things I was just willing to go out there and really outwork anybody. And that created success for me. So I knew I'd be successful in anything I tried, but to me, it was more, Hey, can other people do it too? So I knew no matter what it was for me, I could probably do it, but I couldn't offer somebody something I didn't think everybody could do if they, if they applied themselves properly. Right. And I saw that with this, like, like, Everybody could do it because it was simplified down to simple 
scalable processes that can be repeated by large numbers of people, simple tasks that can be repeated by large numbers of people effectively. And that's what I identified. I identified the simple tasks that can be repeated by, effectively repeated by large numbers of people. And that to me is the secret of success when it comes down to the network marketing industry. Can everybody do it? Is it simple? And can it be repeated? And that's the big things for me when I look at it. And that's what I saw uh, as the primary reason why I was willing to get started. And one of the things I keep talking about is simple system succeed, right? And when it gets too complicated, you get overwhelmed, you lose consistency. So for you, what were the simple tasks that were like, hey, this can be scalable? What are they? Yeah, well, so some of the simple tasks was just building authentic relationships daily, right? Um, but not 100 or 50, two. That was a, one of the things that I really stuck out, building two authentic or 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 uh, or, or creating two authentic relationships daily, meeting, connecting with two people per day, you know, in my everyday life without taking time away from what I was doing. Cause I was really busy with construction. I was constantly on the road. I didn't have a lot of time. Like when I started, I maybe put in six it, at the most eight hours a week when I started. Um, and quite honestly, I don't think I did pass. I don't think I went past 12 to 15 hours a week when I got the six figures. I don't think I ever did any more than that. I think I stayed within that framework. Um, I started to really fall in love with it, so it's hard to really be sure. Sometimes I might have put more time in, but I didn't realize if I spent any more than 12 to 15 hours, you know, before I hit that six figure mark, which is about two and a half years in, like a solid expected six figure, right? You can make a lot of money with, with, with quick, fast money, but I'm talking about a solid I could live on. I knew it was going to continue to kind of roll in because I built a good foundation for it in about two and a half years. But, uh, but it's because I was running another business. So that, that's, that what it was for me. Uh, and that's what really kind of set it apart. And one of the major tasks was that two, like m- building two relationships per day. The second task that really stuck out to me was don't focus on getting so many people, right? Uh, and a lot of network marketing, people want to build these wide, giant organizations. I just focused on two. I focused on driving two vertical teams like an oil well. Like I really, really, and that's the business model I have. So I just really, really focus on driving two vertical teams and just creating as much synergy as possible, as much profitability as possible, and and really focus on getting people to that base level where they where they made some money, where they got a they earned over $1,000. They made $1,500 is, is, was a goal for me. I wanted to help every single person get that $1,500 commission. And, and by the way, at th- that time, $1,500, you know, 25 years ago, went a little longer than $1,500 today. You know what I mean? Today is more like 3,000 plus with what it would need to be. But that was my goal. And it was enough to create people's attention to be like, wow, now I can go. So I really focused on those simple things. Add two people per day. Make sure people got plugged into the training. So they realize the biggest value in network marketing isn't so much to me the money, although it's easy to say when you've made a lot, right? I think it's more the personal development. I, I, and I have a list. I'm actually doing a, a, a session next Monday where I'm talking about what is the huge payoffs that people get from network marketing outside of the money. And I really wholeheartedly believe that... um the payoffs are even bigger than the money if you cooperate and 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 use the system properly. It 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 gives you opportunities to build great relationships and connections with with forward looking people. It helps you grow yourself, become a little bit better every single day. It gives you opportunity to get access to great products, depending on the company you're with. That can really be a life changer. The great experiences to, to become more more um, uh, spiritual. Right. And and a lot of aspects to really have many realms that far exceed the benefit financially um, by being a part of it. And and, and that's what was a big deal to me for sure. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. You know what? I just realized how ironic it is because you were the number four ranked pitcher in baseball and you want to get drafted. And uh, today the MLB draft is actually going on right now. Oh, wow. Yes. Um, So, how did you do once you got started? So when I first started, um, I, I would say at first, interestingly enough, I, I, I would say I got a little lucky uh, because the first three people I showed the business plan to did it. That's not common, of course. 
But for me, it was, uh, it, you know, so, um, but I will tell you in that first week, I got it in front of 12 people. Now, the first three were the ones that did it, but nine of them came back to me and said, when you start making money, give me a call, let me know these things don't work. You know, everything that people hear, I got all the same stuff, the same feedback that everybody was. And by the way, like I always tell people you need to have grit to be successful in network marketing. Grit, I think is probably the number one aspect, the number one trait that people have to have to be really successful in network marketing because you have to be able to go through challenges. You have to be able to go through people questioning you. You have to be willing to take a social demotion in the minds of the people around you to, because they're going to question your, 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 your brains. They're going to question if you're smart or not. They're going to question how dumb you are because you got involved in one of those things. That's going to happen no matter how you present yourself. So you have to have grit. And, and that's a very, very important part. But when I got started, I got lucky. I got my first three people to join. And it was only because I was blown away at how powerful it could be at first. And I'll be honest with you. Within three weeks, I was at my first major conference. I was blessed the fact that three weeks after I got started, the annual major conference was that weekend. I came in in July. It was the actually the last couple of days of July and the first week of August. So I got all the information and I understood what was possible within my first 30 days. If people have an opportunity to bring people into their business within that first month that their company has a major event, it really makes a difference. Um, so I had a different swag about me. I had a different persona about me. When I first started, it was like, hey, maybe this work, maybe it won't, but I'm doing good in construction and it sounds like it might work. Three weeks later, I'm at a conference. I come back. I know it's going to work because I saw it was possible. I saw the vision. I, I met the team. I met other people that I knew I was smarter than. Maybe I was even better looking than them, but that were making a lot of money, you know? And I'm like, man, if they can do it, I know I can. I real I, that's where I took ownership, right? I took full ownership of what was possible because I saw it was possible. I met the founder. I met all different things. And I realized how real this could be at that moment. And that's where it became my thing versus just being in my accountant's thing. You know, I took full ownership and I decided that I was going to pass him up. You know, it was just something that I decided and I ended up passing them up for sure. But um, uh, uh, that was something that happened for me. Those first three people, all are still with me today, by the way. I talk about really cool. All of those first three people, that's 25 years ago. They're still in my organization today. They're still with me today because I really made sure authentically up front that I gave people what they needed to do, that it wasn't going to be easy, but it was going to be worth it, Right. And, and there was a system to follow. And I really was a good follower of the system until I started contributing to, you know, my own, you know, parts of the system and, and, and enhancing it over time just from my own personal experiences. So it was a struggle with the negative of people. I didn't like the word no, but I got lucky with my first few people that got started. Mm -hmm. So it gave me the almost I didn't have a choice but to keep going because I had people following me and I couldn't let them down. You know, mentioned 25 years. Uh, it's incredible. Those three people are still there. And uh, right before we started the show, we talked about how with social media, I think nowadays, everyone knows of someone uh, that's successful, right? Now, you may not like the industry, you might like, but you know of a friend of a friend, you've seen it, that been successful. But at the same time, it's like, e it's, it, while it's easier, I don't know if you agree with this, but I think it's easier to recruit people because of the social proof, but it's hard to keep people because they see so many people from different companies. Oh, they, they must be doing well. And then they think the grass is always greener. So what are the, some of the keys to be able to keep people throughout these 25 years? You know, that's probably the most important thing we're going to talk about today because the, the internet and technology has brought some advancements and enhancements to us, right, Simon, which we all know, we see them all the time, but it brought its own challenges at the exact same time. And you just, highlighted many of them. Um, and, and, and I will tell you, I will, the number one, there's many, but the number one reason that I've been able to retain a strong bit of my organization, like the, the majority, I think my, my retention is way up there. I I'm not a mass recruiter. I never was a mass recruiter. I was an authentic relationship builder. I build authentic relationships. That is the glue. So what I've always done was things where I spent time with people, 
real people in person. I don't care where they're at. I will tell you, I'm back traveling like I did pre-COVID. And I know COVID created a lot of people. I, I, first of all, I've had Zoom since it was, I had a beta Zoom account, like when they were testing it out. I've had, I think it's been 13 or 14 years now because I had an international group. So I had to use it, but nothing has nor will ever replace our ability to become authentic human beings, help create those real relationships where you're building relationships, where you're beyond a computer screen, where you can transfer energy. And, and I know this sounds like work. It is. I know this sounds like it's not as convenient as sometimes network marketing companies pitch. That's true. It's not. But if you want to have something that lasts for 25 years that still pays you hundreds of thousands a year or millions of dollars a year, whatever, you need to be different. You need to set yourself apart. You have to do what most people aren't willing to do, which means they'll remember you more. They'll realize you really care. And, and it goes back to the old cliche statement that people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care, right? And me being willing to drive to someone's house instead of jumping on Zoom, a 45-minute ride or an hour ride and sitting down with them and doing a business presentation with them, but then spending time developing their action plan with them, showing that I care, they're a real person. Me having the ability to grab this thing, we call it a phone, right? It's what we used to always used to like call people on it, but now like people wonder why you're calling them on their phone. They'll, they'll text you, but they're like, wait, I don't like to take a call. It's called a phone. That's what it's originally intended for. But now people just want to like answer messages. But I still call people. Why? Because I'm doing something that most people aren't willing to do. I'm showing people that they matter to me, that I care about their success, that I want them to win. And there are certain things that a message just won't accomplish. It'll actually devalue it or diminish it, or they'll completely receive it incorrectly. Same thing with a video. Like right now, I hope you guys are feeling some energy, but like authentically, if we were in person, the energy would be completely different than what you're hearing now. You'd feel it, right? Right, Simon? Like it would be felt. It's almost like a tuning fork. If I buzz the tuning fork right now and you were holding one because we're on a video right now, mine would buzz, yours wouldn't. But if you are in the same room and I buzz my tuning fork within minutes, yours would be humming too because the frequency is being shared in the environment. That is what made me really authentically build my group. And it's interesting because I had more business going on on technology than almost anybody from 2020 to 2023, 2024 even, right? Like 2020 20, 20 through 2022 probably. Like, because I, I knew it. I was using it already. I'd had, but so much of it because it became so overweighted in that it created an army full of weaklings, meaning people were dependent upon me to do too much and they weren't learning how to self stand. They weren't learning how to stand on their own merit because they were leaning on me. Also, they weren't doing as many presentations because I was doing a lot of them. So the problem with that was now they didn't really learn what they were talking about. So they didn't even really know what they were in. They didn't know the benefits because they weren't explaining it. They were letting somebody else do it, so they really didn't understand it. And also, you know when it is, when you're presenting it yourself, the number one person that you're recommitting is you. As long as every time you present, you're getting your information out, my number one goal is, hey, I need to present this in the way that gets me back in again. And that's my whole goal. But if you're not presenting, are you doing that? No, you have somebody else. And you know if it's the same person, you hear them over and over and over again. They start to lose their luster. You stop listening. It's almost like familiarity breeds contempt, right? And, um, and that's what's happening. So uh, with the social media side, with the aspects of what's going on technologically, what helped me retain an organization is having authentic relationships. And I will tell you, I started in-person presentations back way earlier than I think anybody that I know. I've been preaching it and pounding on a table for probably two years now because I, I want to, and I needed it because when I was at home nonstop, by the end of the day, I was exhausted. Even though I never left my chair, I was on a computer like this all day. But when I spend time, I can leave at six in the morning, Simon, and work till 10 o'clock at night and be with people all day and come home more energized than when I left if I'm meeting them in person. But if I'm doing it online, man, I'm just sapped with energy because I'm giving energy out but I'm not really receiving it back because the computer's gobbling it up and it's not transferring it to each other. So I think that's the number one thing is 
Use the technology to connect with people, initial connections, but get in person with people as soon as you possibly can. Um, and I'm telling you, right now, I've had the most productive since January 15th. I might have had the most productive five, six months that I've had in my career. Like really, really close. The only other time it might have been a little more productive would have been in like 2008, 2009. Um, but right now we have massive productivity. Why? Because I'm actually going back. What's old is becoming new again. I'm going back to building those real authentic relationships as much as I can. Of course, you can't do it with everybody. But that's showing people that they matter to me. And they're like, wow, dude, you really do care. And they never leave because that's the glue. That's the juice. That's, people want to be a part of something, right? Yeah. You know, my mentor, the founder of our company, he said, I'll never forget. He said, you can digitize all you want. This was before COVID. He said, you can digitize all you want, but people are still human beings and they need experiences and to feel a part of something. And that cannot be accomplished with any other means but being in people's presence. So that's that's my my take on that. I love that. I totally agree. Um, but how do you stay consistent? You're so busy. What routines or ha hacks or do you have to help you stay consistent? Yeah, I mean, for, for me, it's a matter of just creating small, bite-sized daily goals that I just am relentless on achieving. Now, don't get me wrong. I have times where I enjoy my residual. You know, I do really well and I enjoy it. I have kids. It's a major priority for me to spend time with my kids. I know you and I were talking about that before, you know, we, we started the recording. So, and that's a blessing of this industry. This industry gives you that opportunity, especially with companies that really do it right. But the reality of it is, um, you know, when I'm really building, like I'm just non-negotiable. I just, I'm, I will not finish my day without finishing my small, simple tasks. So one of the things I do in terms of habits and rituals is I, I, I have a, I, it's funny because my whole life up until, about a year and a half ago, I really, I, I ran by the seat of my pants. I did really flow, but I was just, I, I made commitments to myself, but I, I always kept those promises to myself. That, that's an important thing. Whatever promise you make yourself, keep them. Because once you start breaking the promises that you make yourself instantly, now, you know, you don't trust yourself anymore. Now it's easier and easier and easier to not accomplish a goal. I was relentless. I would not rest every day until I accomplished my daily goal. So again, one of those tasks was adding two per day, right? One of those tasks was making sure I, I made at least one phone call while I physically spoke to somebody every single day, right? To approach them to at least evaluate or, or review. Uh, I'm, I'm not one to, to, to be a direct approach type of guy. You might be great in my business, Simon. I love to talk about it. I, I never was comfortable with that. Mine was like, hey, Simon, you have a business. I have a business. I'd like to share it with you. You can share more about what you're, what you're doing to me. And let's see if we have a way to be a strategic partner moving forward. If we can refer business to each other, we both win. You might even see something you might want to do uh, with me together, but I'm fine with it either way. I just want to kind mm -hmm. of roll, run it by you and just be, 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 a, it, be a professional and create a good rapport with you and see how we can help each other first and foremost. If there's more to that story, great, but that's a bonus, you know? So th that was my, my thing. And I would listen every day. I listen to an audio. This is another thing that really sets, I think, me apart. I'm, I am non-negotiable with this. I learn something every single day. I've done it for 25 straight years. I don't think I can think of a day where I didn't do something to learn something more and become just a little better version of myself, whether it's listen to an audio, uh, a podcast, a video, some kind of reading, uh, uh, some, some aspects of different books, uh, uh, an audio book. Every single day, I say, what can I learn that can make me a better leader, a better advocate, a better asset to other people to bring more value to people's lives? What can I do? And, and that's, I've done that for 25 straight years. So that's the third thing every single day. And the fourth thing is I remind myself of my goals. I have four major things daily that I do. Add to every single day like clockwork. Make sure I contact and communicate with one, what I call a direct response conversation, uh, uh, Simon. So direct response conversation is it's either in person or it's on a phone call. A text is a direct response. They have time to respond. Think about why you're asking. They overanalyze it, right? A direct response is a phone call or an actual in-person conversation. Every day, I want to have at least one of those. I read my goals every single day. Every day, I read my goals and remind myself what my goals are because that's the juice that's going to keep me going through the ups and downs, the roller coaster rides of being an entrepreneur. And I listen to an audio every single day, whether or, or some kind of some kind of uh, 
at first, well, it was always an audio when I started, but then things have changed. Now there's podcasts and, and you know, 20, uh, 10 to 20 pages of, of a different book maybe. Um, but I, I always listen to something for sure or watch a video. And that's my four big ones that keeps me going. This is my favorite question. What is your worst moment in network marketing to the point you wanted to quit, but you didn't? That's why you are where you are today. Yeah, I mean, I, I, worst moment was I had somebody that I helped. I spent a lot of time. Now, interestingly enough, Simon, I met her. I met this person on social media, right? Um, and um, they they were they 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 played the part really well on social media, brother. Like they and you know how sometimes people they they really can play a part, right? She looked like she was as legit can be. She had a decent number of followers, uh, but it just turned out that she's a really good actor, you know. Um, uh, and, and one of the challenges was, but I, I knew she was able to lead the people. So I really spent, I invested a year, a year with this person. And I helped this person, I, I, I helped this person build their business up to just shy of a six figure. I mean, really, really close to a six figure income in, in one third of the time it took me. Right. And I poured all my time and effort in this person. Right. And, uh, I got him there, but a lot of it was me. It was my work. She wasn't willing to go out and do the work. And I was willing to do the work that she wasn't willing to do. But then what happened was she got elevated. She got elevated in credibility because of how fast she grew. But most of it was who? Right here. Because once she realized she had to do the work, she, you know, and she had a couple negative things. And then another company said, oh, we're going to put you at the top. We're going to give you all this great benefit. You know, if you come with us. And she, she quits and go to get something else. Now, six months later, that company's out of business. Big mistake on her part. However, that right there was the most difficult time I ever had in the business because I invested something into someone. And I, I knew, but I overlooked it. I was kind of, uh, I was intentionally ignorant to the fact I saw the signs probably the whole time that something like this could mm -hmm. happen. But I was like, if I get them making enough, they won't disappear. You know, it's a character flaw and you have to be able to identify those things and either they're going to build and become better out of that or you just have to know when to um, cut ties. I will tell you, though, it still led to some of my best relationships in the industry. I wouldn't change it for anything in the world. Although it was a worse time, it was terrible. I had to, my whole group's like, why did this person leave? We don't understand. She was making so much so fast that da 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 um, and, um, it was a very challenging time. Now, thankfully I didn't have much turnover at all. Like very, in, in fact, because of the relationship I had with my team, very few, I think less than five even left out of the thousands that I had at the time. Right. And they were just a low hanging fruit that were new that didn't know any better. And it was only because I had a great relationship with them and they knew I cared and they knew I was here for the long haul. Uh, but man, it was challenging, man. It was so hard. And, and it was hard for me to to trust again after that, you know, to, to trust going all in on somebody. And that was a, that, that hurt me. And it hurt what I, I'm so, I love to help people so much that sometimes I will tell you, here's my, what, what I would say my weakness in this industry. I do more for people than I should to this day. Um, my, my mentor used to always say, do as much as people need, but never as much as they want. If you do everything that you want, you did too much. Do as much as people do as much for people as they need, but never as much as they want because they'll always want more than they need. Um, and and sometimes I always go over that. I, sometimes I go over that line. I've got a lot better, um, and that's why I've been able to scale better. But at the same time, sometimes you want so much more for people than they want for themselves. Uh, and by by being like that, you know, you can set them up for you can set yourself and them for failure. You're hurting them as much as you're hurting yourself, and you have to really say, hey, whose fault really was it? It was probably mine, right? And, and uh, that's that's, but that comes with maturity and, and experience. Hey, thank you so much, Donna. You've been amazing. You have dropped so many nuggets. Uh, I'm going to wrap up the show. This can be. Uh, I'm going to ask you some quick questions to pick your brain, and this can be quick one word or one sentence. What is one of your favorite success quotes that motivates you? I love it. And can I share two? Sure. My only reason, because I cannot decide between these two to this day, and, and things have changed over time, but these are my two favorites today. Today in this, persistent, the first one is persistence and resilience only come from having been given the chance to work through difficult problems. That's one. I love that one because 
you don't realize what persistence and resilience means until you have to be persistent and resilient. And it just builds character. The second one is success is not final. Failure is, failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. It's the courage to continue that counts. That's a Winston Churchill quote. Success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. What is one habit that's helped you become successful? And now today, it, it's creating some ha- some some uh, uh, like a morning routine. Um, I I never did it before. It's something that I really got into. Um, and one of the habits is just first of all, number one is, is setting my goals at night before I go to bed. I sleep so much better than waking up in the morning trying to figure out what I need to do. So before I go to bed, I love to re re look at my goals. That's a good habit. I look at my goals in the morning and at night. I I make sure I focus on that as I realize recenter myself. This is why I'm doing what I'm doing. This is my purpose. This is my mission. This is my, my, my reason. So I read my goals. I, I, I set my, um, my, my checklist for the next day. Um, and I'm, I'm obviously dragging things up from this day that I maybe didn't accomplish. I'm, I'm, it's a constant evolution and moving forward. And then I wake up and I have a routine of what I do. I get my workout in. I eat right. I, I take my supplements. I do the things I need to do that sets me up. I, I get, you know, I, I, I get in the sun just a few minutes. I, I, I barefoot outside. There's things that I do and I do it quickly too. I don't, I'm, I'm a type of person gets up and get, get busy, but I do take those moments for myself. Um, and I'm getting better and better at this, by the way. I'm not by any means perfect at it. Like I try not to look at my phone right away, although. Sometimes I do, but I, but these are the things that really, really, um, have made a major difference and impact in my life now, uh, more than when I was younger and immature in the industry and then in the business that, that, um, really could have, uh, I did well, but I'd be way further along if I would have known what I know now for sure. What's the best piece of advice you ever received? My best piece of advice, my mentor, founder of the company, the man, he, he had said uh, to me, Mentor people without doing it for them. Teach them what to do. Tell them what to do, but let them do it. Don't do it for them. What's your favorite prospecting tool? So say someone's interested. Assume you meet them face-to-face or phone call. My favorite, pros- my favorite prospecting tool. Uh, all right, so, so from a cold perspective, my favorite prospect today. Now, this is interesting because I've, I've, I've recruited a ton off social media, a ton off you know, people incoming, doing guest speaking, things like this. But my favorite prospecting tool, I would say from a, uh, from cold is networking events. I love networking events, going out and building authentic relationships at networking events, biz, uh, a business networking events like chambers of commerce and things like that, where you can actually get with people and shake a hand. But in terms of a follow-up tool, I would probably say in t- today more than ever, um, my favorite tool would probably be a, a credibility, uh, article and video that shares with people that, Hey, you're going to find positive and negative. Here's the main reasons why you're going to find positive, And here's the main reasons why you're going to find negative. And this is a purpose why people use that and, and, and it's, and, and the malintent of that. So I love to use that because it lets people know it almost inoculates them in a way. It lets them know, hey, here's what might happen. And if you bring it up and you help inoculate them so they're expecting um, certain things, they're not taken off track and they're not put into the, what I like to call the prospect protection program, you know, like where they, <laughs> where all of a sudden they were so excited and ready to start, or maybe they did start and then are looking to get out as soon as they got in because a, a, a spouse or a friend found something negative. And really what they found negative was just a clickbait tool that another company was using to try to say they're better. You know, and it's off. It's important for people to realize that that's a strategy for sure. It's a tactical strategy. What's your favorite app on your phone that's not a social media app? My favorite app on my oh goodness, that's a great question. Let's let me let me just take a real quick peek. My favorite app, I mean, uh, it, it's it it's got to be the podcast app. It's got to be the Apple Podcast app for sure. I'm and I'm such a huge fan of podcasting. I have a podcast, and, and I love being on podcasts with other people. Um, it's just a great way to learn. Uh, Audible's another one. I mean, I, I, probably they're my two bigs, you know, uh, of the podcasting app and Audible. Obviously, I have Zoom on here too. Um, I still leverage uh, Dropbox a lot too. Um, so, and the last one for family wise is Life 360. I don't know if you all have it, 
But Life 360, I got older kids now. And Life 360, I, we can find out where each other is just by looking at the app. So that's good to uh, keep track of our kids that way. It gives us peace of mind. What are two or three books you can recommend to ML Nation? Okay. It's so, so I have three that I think have been life-changing for me. Now, there's so many new ones, but I would say the three that changed my life. The first book, interestingly enough, Simon, that I've ever read cover to cover was Think and Grow Rich from Napoleon Hill. It was the first book I ever, I didn't read books cover to cover when I was in school, when I was in college, I like got the cliff notes to the cliff notes, whatever they were called, you know, like, like I, I never read books. I just, I, I wasn't a reader when I started, uh, at all. Um, but, but, um, I started reading cause I realized one, another, one of the really successful entrepreneurs that I ran into said, I asked him and, and he was a guy who didn't even graduate high school. And I was, and a lot of people were saying, you got to start reading books. You got to start reading books, Don. And, uh, and I'm like, I just, I'll listen to audios all day long, but I don't want to listen to books. Right. And, but so I asked this one, I was, I always, oh, by the way, I was looking for one person to tell me I didn't have to read books. Right. <laughs> I just wanted that one person to say I didn't have to, and I couldn't find one, but I finally went to this guy. Uh, he didn't graduate high school. He got his GED. And I said, Hey, do you read books? Do you, do you think I have to read books? Does everybody tell me I have to read books? And he answered it by this. He says, Don, the only, let me just show you what I found. The only difference between you today and you tomorrow are the people that you meet and the books you read. Because they're the only things you don't know anything about. So fine, I got the point. I started listening, reading books. Uh, Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich. First book, I read it right after that, cover to cover. Changed my life. I read it many, many times. Second book, still to this day. It, uh, it's in network marketing. It's almost like what I call almost a network marketing Bible, right? How to Win Friends and Influence People from Dale Carnegie. Um, and then the last one would be Leadership. Now, Leadership 101 from John Maxwell, but honestly, truthfully, anything leadership from John Maxwell uh, is fine by me. I, but that's just the first one I le- I read uh, because it was smaller and it was easier to read. And, um, but they were the, my, for me, that's my three. And here's the last question, the million dollar question. You ready? I'm ready. Imagine you had to start all over again and you knew no one, but you had all your current knowledge, skills, and wisdom. What's the first thing you would do or the first place you go to find prospects and build a network marketing business from scratch? Uh, that's so easy for me. And, and, and I, I don't want anybody to sa- think I sound like a dinosaur. I'm telling you, this is going to be the new way. The people that can do this from now moving forward are going to be the new top earners in this industry. Ready? I would go on Google. And I would search for local business networking events. And I would, I would attend every single business networking event that I could. Chambers of Commerces, meetup.com. And I would do every single thing I could in person because that's where you cut your teeth. And that's where you learn how to be an authentic human being and care about other people and really bring around. I'll tell you, if you do this, It'll differentiate you. And most people aren't willing to do it right now. If you are, it'll change your life. That's what I would do. Any area I go to, if you drop me into a town, it's the first thing I do. Find a local chamber of commerce, business networking events, meetup.com, um, local clubs, and go out and start shaking hands, meeting and greeting, and utilizing the skills of networking and their strategies and tactics to do this that I teach, but really helping people um, uh, realize that I'm there to help them, and hopefully it'll reciprocate in return, which does. As we wrap up, any last words or advice? And then what's the best way our listeners can connect with you, Don? Yeah, sure. Um, so uh, last piece of advice, guys, is, is, is this. We live in, f- first of all, to connect with me, I'm, I'm at Don Martin Live on every social platform that's out there. TikTok, Facebook, blah, 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 at Don Martin Live. I just started on TikTok, right? I have everything else, Instagram. X Twitter, uh, whatever, whatever we call it now, uh, at Don Martin live, um, uh, D- DMJ, DMJ international.com is my website. So my name's Don Martin jr. So, and I honor my dad by keeping the junior. My dad is one of the most important influences of my life. He, uh, my dad and mom both were awesome. My dad really elevated. I could do anything I wanted. He protected my mind space. He really, really was, uh, I was blessed to have, a have, have parents like I did. Um, and, uh, really, really let me believe I can be anything I wanted. And, and I think that the confidence of trying things that I got came from that. Um, so DMJ international.com. Um, so that, that's how you connect with me. Uh, my podcast, uh, is, is grind life, G R Y N D L Y F E. 
with Don Martin Live. If you just search Don Martin Live on any podcast platform, I'd show up. I, I, I got some new episodes about the launch, but, but that, that's how you connect with me. But last pieces of advice. We are in a marketplace now where inflation, cost of living, interest rates are crushing people. People are, are you know, jobs are not compensating in relation to how fast people are, the the dollar is being impacted. It's just not happening. They're not giving people 20% annual raises just so they can maintain their standard of living, guys. People in order to, over the last 12, uh, 24 months, if people were making $100,000 24 months ago, they'd have to be making $140,000 a day to not go backwards in their lifestyle. That's not to get ahead, Simon. That's to stay in the same spot. We have, and entrepreneurship to me is the only way that people can outpace the rate of inflation because jobs aren't going to do it, right? Um, And starting from scratch is a hard thing to do or multiple jobs are a hard thing to do because most people already have multiple jobs. So I want people to realize the biggest tip is you need to know you have the answer. You need to know that you have the solution, that you have something that can help people build a business that will outpace inflation if you build it right in the proper fashion in the scalable form. Um, so as a tip, really understand what's happening out there. Understand what problems people are having and then just become the solution to that problem with your opportunity. And if you don't know how to do that, talk to somebody, somebody like Simon, somebody like myself, somebody that can help you really understand how to frame that and use that to help people identify how they can grow forward. And our mission, you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. And today, you may hang out with Don Martin. So keep up the momentum and go to mlmission.com and go to the podcast tab and the show notes, the summary, timestamps, those are the links to uh, where you can connect with Don. Definitely go check him out and follow him, see what the nuggets and how he solves, uh, gives a lot of solutions to problems uh, network marketers face. So definitely go check him out. And, um, all the links will be, all the stuff will be in the show notes. Anyway, in order to be successful in life and business and in network marketing, you must help others. So Don, thanks again for sharing your valuable time with ML Nation. We're grateful to you and we appreciate you for having a positive impact on millions of distributors worldwide. Thank you so much, Don. God bless and, you. And th- Simon, thanks for doing this. This is awesome. I appreciate you. Hey, ML Nation, Simon Chan here. Great show with Don Martin. Now you know why I wanted him uh, on the show for the third time. And, uh, he talked about in the million dollar question, right? He talked about uh, what's the best way to grow a business from scratch is to be joining networking groups. And I've been talking a lot of this about uh, recently about importance of like genuine relationships, right? And uh, if you don't know how to do that, go check out his episode 217, where this is in the archives. For if you don't know what about it, because uh, Apple somehow we have so many episodes, we're over 800 episodes. We had to put the first 300 on a separate podcast. It's called ML Nation Archives, and you can go listen to episode 217 where he talked about being the best networker in the room. So it doesn't matter what setting you're in, whether you're in the barbecue or you're in a holiday party or birthday party, how to be the best networker, make those general connections. He goes into more detail about that, and if you have lack self belief. You can check out episode 619. But head over, head over to the show notes page. We have this updated show notes page with timestamps, with summaries of major aha moments all listed out for you. And by the way, that's also good content that you can use, that you can, uh, of course, give credit when credit's due, uh, share it on your social media, or teach it to your teams. And that's one of the missions I've had, uh, is to really elevate the profession and share the good stuff out there. And because like what Don said, the best part of the remark is not just about the income, it is about the personal growth, not just in the business to make money, but in other areas in your life, right? So to being a better spouse, better spiritual, better parent, definitely for me, better parent, better spouse, and gosh, to save my marriage many, many ways um, in terms of the personal development I've learned through the profession. So anyway, uh, for Don, he talked about something I've been preaching for over the last couple of months, is keeping things simple, right? Simple systems succeed. And he basically had a simple task he did every single day was building authentic relationships. Doesn't need to be 50. It just needs to be two. 
right? Two, building relationships every single day and uh, reaching out to people and also getting people plugged into trainings, right? Get himself plugged into trainings. They talk about his routine, four things he does every single day, right? Uh, communicating with people on the phone and not like a mess- text message, but actually connecting with people. It, I think nowadays with social media, like no one uses the phone, right? No one, not many people meet in person, but I, I have to think back to my relationship. My best relationships always happen at events. That's why like, uh, in October, in, you know, in a couple of weeks from now, I'll be going to, uh, Rob Sperry's Leaders of Leaders Mastermind in Mallorca, Spain, right? Connecting with leaders. I go to events. I take my, I visit one of my close friends, right? I'm always, I take my son to events take, for baseball. I'll be, uh, my son's baseball dreams, always take and go to different tournaments, different places to meet people because those are the connections you meet. You know, again, where are you going to be five years from now is determined the people you spend time with, the events you go to and, uh, your personal development. So those are really important things. So awesome show. Yeah, I could go on. He gives so many nuggets. Uh, do as much as they need, but not for, for what they want, not more than what they want. I love that quote that his mentor taught him. A lot of great advice. You mentor people who, but don't do it for them, right? Lots of nuggets here in terms of connecting with people. I think going back to old school, and you know, nowadays, I think not many people have been with 25 years with the same company, right? Even though you could call them dinosaurs, they're old, they're outdated, uh, but there's certain secrets to what Don Martin, Nor Martin's doing. It's not just about his company's great. Obviously, his company's awesome, but there's the secrets that he just shared. At the end of the day, it's a relationship business, right? If it wasn't for a relationship business, then the companies wouldn't need us. They would just right, do some advertising on their own and hire sales reps to do it. But the reason network marketing succeed and works is because of the relationships we've had. So I'll work on those authentic relationships. And make sure to head over to mlnation.com, click on the show notes page, Check out the new updated show notes and connect with Don and follow him on social media. See what he's done. He's done a lot of good stuff. Got a lot of great nuggets he's sharing as well that would help you out. And don't forget, lastly, these episodes took a lot of my time, especially Don. He was super busy. He's about to coach his son's basketball game. And I'm about to head over to Bannon Kitchen with my son. Make sure at least, if you appreciate this, subscribe. And be a giver, subscribe, and leave us a review. I will really, really appreciate it. Make sure you follow Don as well. Hey, that's what I have. I'm loud and proud of these part of this amazing profession. And yes, network marketing is awesome, right? Not just because of the money, but for the personal development. And also residual income does exist just as Don Martin. Hey, everyone, God bless. Go out there. Have a positive impact on someone's life.